All right, what's going on? Hello to all the parents out there. I want, I want to do this video that connects to how we should communicate with our kids and, and maybe some words that we want to leave out, some words that we want to leave out. So I have my phone here because I got my notes. So be mindful of that. And, and this is, you know, before, before we get started, you know, when it comes to parenting, I, I find that parenting is a journey. I'm a dad, I got two kids, and, and there's times that things go really well. There's times that <laughs> things don't go so well. There's times where my voice gets way too high, and then a couple of seconds later, I'm kind of thinking to myself, the F word, right? I'm going, man, what, what, why did I show up in that way? And I find that when we are able to really connect with ourselves, with ourselves as parents and, and acknowledge that there's no perfect path, it's, it's a journey, it's a marathon, and we develop with our kids through all of these phases. Mine are young, but I can tell you there's differences in the way that we connected with each other during their toddler years compared to now. And I'm sure that whenever they hit their teen years and, and you know, later in life when they get older, in their 20s and 30s, and maybe I become a grandpa, those, those phases are going to open up new doors and new opportunities for me. So first and foremost, I want to thank you for watching this video. You know, if you're, if you're a parent out there, I want to thank you for showing up in the, in the space with your child. Um, what I want to share with here, what I want to share with you here, are phrases that we really want to steer away from, and then we're going to the why, so that you're able to move forward in the right direction and help raise healthy, happy kids. Now, before you, before you maybe want to go in a different direction, the way that we communicate with our kids translates into their thoughts, their feelings, their behaviors. You know, as an example, if I communicate with my child by let's say, not answering their questions, right? Ignoring them. They're, they're going to learn a lot from that. They're going to learn that it's okay to be ignored. They're going to learn that adults treat them in this way, right? And that may lead to my child later in life developing certain tendencies. tendency tend, One tendency could be that they feel that their, their value is low, right? They feel that their self-esteem is low, their self-worth is low. So then they may struggle to show up in certain places like at school or work, all because of that one interaction, right? That, and of course, there could be other interactions, but it's one there that added to that. So that's where I think it's important for us as parents to acknowledge we, we've, got, we've got this beautiful space, this beautiful opportunity to show up for our kids, you know, to, to show them that they can, they, you know, they're, they're loved as they are, and then to provide them with supportive teachings, Provide them with a space of growth, a space of development, and also a space of uh, authenticity. I know I can't pronounce that word too well, but a space where we're learning and growing and giving them that opportunity to say, hey, I don't know everything. You don't need to know everything. Yet we can still show each other immense love and immense support and praise. So the first one I want to share with you is a very common one that I'll hear. And it's where a parent will highlight a gender. You know, so, so, so not to go too deep into um, gender norms, so we'll just kind of stick to um, gender boy, gender girl. And I share that not to go too deep, just to be respectful of, of, of any viewers here. The parent may engage in the words of, like if I'm speaking to my son, I may say, boys don't cry. And I'll share with you as a, as a Latino, as an immigrant, you know, there's a lot of words, a lot of phrases that I was given as a kid that came through these cultural norms. You know, some, some were really good, right? I'd like to thank my parents, if you're watching, thank you, because you've given me a lot of phrases that supported my work ethic. Um, we won't go too much into the other ones. But this one here, boys don't cry. If I share that with my son, my son's name is Alex, and I say, Alex, boys don't cry. What am I teaching him? I'm teaching him to hold in his feelings, his feelings don't need to come out. I'm teaching him to keep all of that really tucked in. Well, my friends, you and I as adults know what happens when we keep things tucked in. If I have a really rough day at work and then my relationship is rough and all other areas are going rough, and this right here is me, we can only put a certain amount of water in here. Once I put too much water in here, it's going to spill out and make a complete mess all over my desk. This represents you. This represents me. When I tell my son, boys don't cry. I am literally telling him to keep pouring and keep pouring and your life is going to have a complete mess around it because you can't hold it in. And I'm telling you to hold it in because boys don't cry. And that's where we as adults get into positions that 
our sleep gets out of whack, our nutrition gets out of whack, our, our, our mood is going irregular up and down because maybe we were given a message at an early point in life, boys don't cry. That's what's important for us as parents to nourish a, a beautiful space of growth. Crying is strength. You ever seen the movie, uh, the film Inside Out? Right, I, I believe it's a Pixar film. And it's got like joy and frustration and, and anger. But the basic point of that film, if you can't check it out, is all of those feelings, all of them, are, are immensely important. Right? It's great that we're happy. Watch a funny movie, Jim Carrey, I love Jim Carrey, and you're, and you're laughing. That's beautiful. But it's also important to cry. And it's also important to get angry. And it's also important to get every single one of those, each one of those. Because that allows us to have that freedom to be who we are and to experience these, these, these feelings. Once we get past that phase, then we teach our children and we, and we teach each other appropriate, healthy reactions. Next, next one I want to share with you is parents may, may share a statement as far as, um, you know, you, you ain't got nothing to be afraid of. You don't have anything to be afraid of. I don't know why you're scared for. Right. So, so phrase around there. And I want you to think about that. I want you to sit on it for a moment. Right. So. You're telling that to your child. I use, use my son here. I'm picking on him for a little bit. Um, I say, listen, Alex, you have nothing to be afraid of. Well, there could be some positive there because I don't want him to be afraid of things. But if we dig a little bit deeper, what psychology is all about, right? We dig a little bit deeper. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with him. I acknowledge you're scared, but I don't want you to take that any further. I want you to remove a race. Where's that pencil? Give me that race. I'm going to erase that fear. That, that'd be nice. But I think, I think something a little more constructive can be there. I think instead of telling our, our kids, you know, you don't have anything to be afraid of. You don't have anything to be scared of. Help me understand why you're scared. Help me understand why you feel the way that you feel. We give our, our kids that space to constructively work through their thoughts and feelings. Versus diminishing them, not showing them any value, not showing them any importance. Because if we as parents, right, we're the leaders, the role models, two fingers, role models, guides, nurturers, and like a thousand other hats that we wear. You know, there's <laughs> certain days I'm like, I'm a maid too. You probably relate to that as a parent. So think about, think about that and think about what you could replace that with. Next one I want to share with you is you're a parent and you got your child. And you reject their no. You tell them, you can't say no to me. And I'm going to raise my hand and be very honest with you. There's times I've said that to my kid, to both of them. And, and not very happy moments, but authentic moments where I'm like, mm, where did that come from? Right, where did that come from? I remember as a kid, you know, being, being a Latino, that there were certain conversations kids um, would have and, and, and the adults kind of put us to a little the side, very cultural, very cultural norm sometimes in the Latino households, at least mine and in those communities, or, or maybe not invited into those conversations. You know, I, I remember as an example here, um, and then we'll jump back in, but I want to share this with you, is when I was younger, um, we'd go to like see a doctor or something, and it was more of a just here, shh, no talking. And, 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 as I, and as I, this is when I was younger, and as I got older, you know, becoming a clinician, a therapist, and, and going through schooling and, and learning, right, about different cultures and norms and all, all of these real interesting things, um, I found myself in a position with my wife, and we were talking about this. And I said, and we, we were talking about the importance of when our kids go into, and you may, you, may, you may already do this, when our kids go into a medical visit with like their primary doctor, letting them have autonomy. You know, letting our kids ask questions, apply their curiosity, letting them know that they're just as much as worth and value as anyone connect, connected to them. You know, you're, you're, you're not better than anyone, but you're, you're, you have that equality. You can, you can share, you can speak. And my kids will do that. And then they're young, they're young kids. So we go to a doctor's appointment and then they would say, um, I have a tummy ache or, or, or something like that. But it develops and nurtures strength, empowerment, and lets them know they have a voice and they can use it. Um, versus, you can't say no to me, right? If we talk to our kids, kind of getting back here to the phrase that we want to eliminate, if we talk to our kids and we say, you can't say no to me, what's happening there? 
And this is, I think, sometimes as parents where we kind of go in the wrong direction. If I tell my child, you can't say no to me, I'm not just telling them a very singular statement. You can't say no to me because I am more than me. I'm an adult. I'm a human being like every other human around here. I'm teaching them a very important lesson that maybe I don't want to teach them. I'm teaching them they can't say no. And that can lead to my child struggling in different areas. Right? Maybe they're at school and someone's engaging in peer pressure. Well, I haven't really developed my child's skill of saying no and knowing that they are able to say no. Connect those dots. And I think that helps us get a long way. You know, if you think about boundaries, right? One of the boundaries is being able to say no. There's books out there, there's books out there, right? On how to say no. There's YouTube videos. We go, we go to see our therapist, right? I can, I can go to see my therapist. It can be focused on, I want to get better at saying no. I say yes to too many people. So at an early age, we can work with our kids. We can help them by eliminating these words. So again, sit on this one. Think about it. Next one I want to share with you is when we share with our kids that, that knowing, uh, when we share with our kids that we know them uh, much better than they know themselves, right? So it could be that I'm sitting down with my son and something's happening and then I go, listen, I know you much better than you even know yourself. And that's another one that I got to work on. That it's another one I got to work on because, because it's parenting, right? Parenting is this journey where much of my childhood just filters in. It's almost like a sponge and you wring it. There's new knowledge on there and there's some old parts that just come from who you are. And as parents, we got, we got parents, we got to do the work. We got to do the diligence to continue to, to craft our skill, to own up. To our big moments and our not so big moments. So with this statement here where I share with my child that I know you better than you know yourself. Think about what it does. If I'm the child receiving it and my parent says that they know me better than I know myself, that's going to disconnect me from me. That's going to get me into this position of even questioning myself. We, we as adults, I, th I think that the older we get, we try to connect more to who we are, our core, our values, our identity, our purpose in life. I mean, how many books are out there about find your purpose in life, connect to your values, become your authentic self? And if I, as a parent, early on in my child's life say that, you know, I know you better than you know yourself, what am I teaching them? I'm, I'm, I'm teaching them, don't go to those libraries. Don't read those books about purpose. Don't read those books about values. Don't build your authentic self. Don't build your identity. Because I and we, everyone out here is going to know you better than you know yourself. And, and you may be listening to this and go, well, maybe you're taking a little bit too far. And and could be, could be right to a degree, could be right to a degree. But I think that's that that's psychology, right? That's when we look at mental health. We look at how maybe one affects something else. And there's examples of these all throughout life. There could be a trauma that we live through. And then how does that trauma continue to affect me down the road? There could be that I am confident and I am seven years old and I go to school and I'm bullied. And after that day, someone calls me the big F word, F-A-T. And that day sticks to me like a tattoo. And I remember that day and my next experiences in life continue to connect to that. That's the power of experiences. That's the power of words. That's the impact that people have on people, that experiences have on experiences. All of this is about parenting, right? And I go back, I go back, and I'm going to continue to go back. Parenting is a journey. It's so important for us as parents to take breaks, acknowledge how many roles we, 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 we wear, how many um, roles we take on, how many hats we wear. Be okay with making mistakes at times and, and owning up, owning up if you make a mistake, saying sorry. If, if, if we mess up as parents, saying sorry to our kids. Because it's another valuable lesson that it teaches them, right? It teaches them we're not too big to say sorry. And, and saying sorry, forgiveness creates this beautiful step. I like to move this pen as I'm talking to you. It creates this beautiful step to building and rebuilding a relationship. My friends, I, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you spending time with me. I hope that this was helpful. Like, subscribe, share this channel. I love doing these videos. I love connecting with you. Let me know what comments you have. What do you think about this video? Any videos that you want uh, created? I will do them as long as I feel competent in that area. 
Um, I certainly don't claim to know everything. I do enjoy being on here and showing up with you as I'm growing in my life and you're growing in yours. I want to thank you for spending time with me. Take care. Have an amazing day.